YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. I hope y'all enjoyed the video that I posted a couple days ago talking about uh, the great divide between Major League Fishing and Bassmaster and how I truly believe that it is hurting the sport. Beyond the angst between the anglers and things like that, more so the business side of things and how it is affecting all of us in our day to day. But guys, today's video is one that I've actually I've wanted to do for quite some time because I feel like a lot of guys uh, overthink fishing. And I actually got a text message from a buddy of mine the other day asking when I was going to do an in your rig video. And the in your rig is something that I honestly had never even heard of until Matt Steffen posted a video on it a few uh, a week or two ago, whenever it was. And I got to see the the video and and since then there's been a lot of guys that post videos about this particular technique talking about how great it is and how to rig it and how they have these secret little rig methods to, to make this worm work and to have this natural action under the water but that's not what this video is about this video is particularly about how anglers overthink fishing so this is not, and I just want to preface this, this is not a knock to Matt Steffen or anybody else that's done this video. Uh, because if they believe that it works, then that's good for them, and it works for them, and that's fantastic. But I truly believe that anglers overthink bass fishing. I, I, I think that we, as a whole, try to make it more than what it actually is. So what I mean by that is, how many high-level tournaments in the last five years? Now, just to go back the last five years, because this rig hasn't been around that long, how many tournaments in the last five years has been won by the new rig? Major tournament. Elite Series, Bass Pro Tour, National Professional League, uh, Bass Open, um, Toyota Series, you name it. How many has been won by it? Based off my research, I haven't found a single one. Now, granted... There's been a few Japanese anglers that have won a few events, and maybe they incorporated that into a catch or two, but that wasn't the primary deal. When I when I look at finesse fishing, and, and if you watch my channel enough, you know I'm a die-hard finesse fisherman. If there's a finesse te technique out there, I, I want to try it, or at least try to figure out a way to incorporate it into my game. But I categorize each particular technique based off of how I can use it, how I can use it in a tournament. So now this, my channel and, and the way I fish isn't just like the everyday guy that's just going to go out there and fun fish every day and just try to catch as many bass as I can. So if that's what you're expecting, it's probably not what you need to be watching right now. But when I look at tournament fishing and I look at the fact that I have eight hours, nine hours, six hours, seven hours, whatever the time limit may be to figure out a, a way to catch my five biggest fish, day in and day out, I'm probably not going to pick up that rig. But I'm also not going to pick up a lot of other rigs either. You know, I'm a net rig. I love throwing a net rig. I've made top tens throwing a net rig. But I also know when not to pick up a net rig. I also know when not to pick up a shaky head or a drop shot and when to flip a jig. And that is the most important thing is figuring out when you need to do things that are going to put you in the best position to catch a big one and a lot of big ones. So... If you look at tournament fishing as a whole, if you look at how guys approach finesse fishing, this particular rig, the problem with this rig is, based off of everything I've watched on it, it is a very realistic worm, but the walking worm was a really realistic worm too. You know, it curled up every time you moved it. There was a lot of natural action. The banjo minnow has some really great action too. My point to this whole thing is, is that there's some great baits out there that are great looking to fishermen, but not necessarily the most effective for tournament fishing. I did a video not long ago talking about the glide baits and why glide baits are not a great tournament bait. They're a great tournament searching bait. They're talking about going out there and finding fish. You can reel that glide bait around and you're gonna see some of the biggest fish in the lake. Are you gonna catch them? More times than not, no. You might have them bite. You know, look at a guy like Oliver Nye. You know, he fished the opens this year and I talk to Oliver almost every single event because we're in the same flight almost every tournament. And Oliver would tell me some of the size fish that he had seen that week. And it was baffling the size of fish in some of these lakes where you wouldn't think there would be big ones. Smith Lake, Norman, just to name a couple. And talking about these gigantic fish that he was seeing coming up on this glide bait, but he wasn't able to catch. Whether or not 
just had a bad luck deal where they, they hit it at the boat, didn't get it completely, whatever it may have been, but at the end of the day, it still didn't put him in the boat. And that's not a knock to Oliver. He's one of the best glide bait fishermen I know. But the deal is, is it just a really hard bait to win tournaments on, especially multi-day events. And that's what, I mean, ultimately, that when I talk about tournament fishing, that's where I'm referring to is multi-day events, two, three days, four days, whatever it may be. Uh, a rig like the Inya rig, or even the Nico rig, for instance, is such a spot specific, a target specific bait. And what I mean by that is you have to fish the rig slow enough that you're not able to cover a lot of water. So if you have a target you can cast to, let's just say it's a stump or a rock, like an individual boulder, or uh, a school of fish that is huddled up in one particular spot you can throw that rig out there and you can let it sit and you can kind of work it a little bit and it's going to do its little natural action of whatever it does Nico rig's going to do something like that but you're going to get that action but you're not going to be able to go and cast 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 and cover a lot of water and a lot of times in tournament fishing I'm not sitting on one spot all day I'm not making the same cast over and over and if I am hitting individual targets throughout the day I want to find a bait that's more efficient. You know, something like a shaky head that's a little heavier that I can cast further. I know if I get a bite, there's a potential that I will get a big bite on it. Um, you know, that's the type of place where I want to pick up a shaky head, a drop shot even. You know, putting a bigger worm on a drop shot, upsizing my bait size just a little bit to try to get that bigger bite. And I'm not saying you can't catch big fish on here on an any rig. I promise you guys, I'm not sitting here trying to bash this thing. But at the end of the day, I feel like we are absolutely overthinking bass fishing. Will the any rig come in and, and replace, you know, have the same um, big feel as like a chatterbait? Absolutely not. Umbrella rig? Absolutely not. Ned rig? Absolutely not. Because the deal is, is all those particular rigs, you can fish a lot of different ways. You can fish them. They're very versatile. And even then those baits have their time and place. Look at the umbrella rig. Everybody thought it was gonna be uh, the main thing that we all throw from day in to day out every tournament, but what we've learned is it really excels in certain times of the year. Yes, you can catch bass on it a lot, but it's not one of those baits that you're gonna go in and dominate tournaments every single tournament that you fish. It's been proven through time, definitely one of those rigs that you have to have on in the, the winter, early spring. What I predict, is that this in your rig will either find a very small niche of when you fish it or it will completely disappear oh one particular rig that it kind of reminds me of a little bit is uh the jackal i think jackal came out with what's called the eye shad and it was like uh was a no tail action bait where they nose hooked this particular soft plastic and you fished it and it had no action it just kind of came to the water like this um you know that was a huge hot technique people were talking about it all over the place and it was be going to be this next big thing and then it dissipated uh, another one and but this one has actually won some tournaments as a spy bait you know a spy bait in, in that particular technique is fantastic and when they are eating that thing it is great but what we've learned over time is that it's very specific to where you fish that thing how you fish that thing and when you fish that thing Smallmouth love it, spotted bass love it certain times of the year. Largemouth, eh, kind of goes there, you know, either way. I mean, largemouth, I haven't really had just a ton of success fishing at largemouth, but I have had a lot more success smallmouth spotted bass where the water is clear. But I say all this to say, guys, stop overthinking bass fishing. It's not that complicated. If you want to go catch fish out deep, there's a handful of baits that you can throw. Now, once you kind of figure out how they are, how they're set up, or where they're at, then you can kind of expand into some other baits and do things like that. But at the end of the day, you don't have to fish these really strange uh, rigs and all these different methods to get a bite. I'm the worst person in the world about it. I overthink bass fishing more than anybody, I feel like. I have 20 rods on my deck almost every single tournament. I'm tripping over them. Um, but at the end of the day, I literally will fish every single rod. If you talk to any of my co-anglers, they're like, man, he, he literally will go through every rod on his deck. And about half of those rods are what I consider my tournament rods, the ones that I know for a fact I'm going to get a bite on, or I feel like I'm going to get a bite on. The other half to a quarter around that range are going to be 
what I consider maybes. I rig these up because I'm like, you know what, this is the perfect situation for this particular bait or this particular rig, and I'm going to pick it up and throw it if I get in the right situation. And a lot of times I will intentionally put myself in the right situation to fish said bait. Now, if you look at all 20 rods rigged on my deck, I'm not going to have five in your rigs on there. I might have like a Nico rig, a shaky head, maybe a drop shot, possibly a Ned rig depending on where I'm at. And then I'm going to have like a Carolina rig, a Texas rig, maybe a Cinco, uh, Thunder Cricket, Square Bill, Deep Diving Crankbait, so on and so forth. Your baits, the normal baits that you know that can win tournaments. I'm not saying the your rig won't win a tournament next year because it, mark my words, it probably will because I'm saying it's not going to, but I do not believe that it will. I think that we're overhyping a bait because it's just different and that's great, but at the end of the day, the techniques that I've mentioned before will reign supreme. It doesn't give me that fire like a, a chatterbait did. It doesn't give me that fire like an umbrella rig did. It doesn't give me the fire like the Nico rig did. I'm just saying, guys. I'm not trying to burst your bubble. I'm just being honest here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit that sub button in the bottom right-hand corner. And comment below, have you tried the your rig? Is it something you're going to incorporate into your game, or do you think it's kind of overhyped, kind of like I do? Would love to hear what y'all have to say. Until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next video.